Hi Smart Sherlock, it's Lucas from Contrio. Welcome to this channel which helps you to develop your algorithmic training strategies and increase your profits. Today I will show you how to implement an algorithmic training strategy in Python. Let's get started. So in this video, I will show you how to create a trading strategy based on moving averages and RSI. First, we need to import the Y Finance library and the TA library to create our technical indicators. Then I import some libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Y Finance to import the data. So for those of you who are not comfortable with the data importation using Y Finance, you can check this video. Then this code is only to put the graph in a dark mode for those of you who work in the dark mode of Google Colab. Then we need to pre-process the data. Here, all the code come from my course, Algorithmic Trading for Beginner. So we'll not explain all the little detail of the function, but here the function is just to import a symbol. So here is the Euro USD symbol. So now we have some data. We need to create the moving averages and the RSI of this asset. So to do it, it's very simple. First, to create the moving averages, we can use the rolling function of pandas. And to create the RSI indicator, we can use the TA library. So I have chosen 30 and 60 for the moving averages and a window of 10 for the RSI. But you can check the course, all these values are not optimal, okay? So it means that if you choose the best parameter for this strategy, you can increase the level of the profit because all these parameters or only a personal choice. So now we can see that we have the SMA fast, slow, and the RSI. And we will use these three columns to create our strategy. First, I will initialize a column named position, which will contain the position of our strategy. Minus one if we take a sell position, zero if we do nothing, and one if we take a buy position. So to create our strategy, we need to have the value of the RSI of yesterday. So in our strategy, there are two conditions. The first condition is that the SMA first must be above the SMA slope if we take a buy signal. So it's logical because it means that there is an upward trend and we will be in position in a buy position only if the RSI of today is below the RSI of yesterday. It can be a little bit weird to use the RSI like this but it's quite logical. Let me explain that. If the RSI of today is above the RSI of yesterday it means that the value of the RSI decreases. And if the value of the RSI decreases, it means that we will be close to the oversell threshold. And then there are a lot of chances that the price of the asset go up. So we have two conditions to buy. The first is that the SMA fast must be above the SMA slow and that the RSI of today must be below the RSI of yesterday. And to compute the sell condition is exactly the opposite. So we need to have an SMA fast below the SMA slow, and we need to have an RSI of today above the RSI of yesterday, because we will be close to the overbuy threshold, and then there are a lot of changes that the price go down. Then we create the condition for the position. So if we have both of these conditions in the same time, we will take a buy 
position. And if we have the both cell condition in the same time, we will take a cell order. And if we don't have the both condition in the same time, we do nothing. Then we can compute the return of the strategy just multiplying the percentage of variation of this asset and the position of yesterday. This shift is very, very important. I will explain it a little bit here because it's literally the most important thing of this video. But if you really want to understand how to trade properly a strategy, you can check the course Algorithmic Trading for Beginners or another of my courses. So we need to put a shift because here we have work with the close price. So obviously, if we work with the close price, we work at like 7 p.m. Okay, because the close price is available at 7 p.m. normally. Okay, but but the variation of today for the assets is the variation from yesterday at 7 p.m. to today at 7 p.m. But if we take the position today at 7 p.m we cannot multiply the position of today at 7 p.m. by the variation from yesterday to today, okay? We have an interference in the data. So we need to multiply the position of today by the variation of tomorrow, okay? So the shift is here to allow us to do that. Here, if we plot the cumulative sum of the return, we can see that this strategy is very profitable, okay? To highlight this, I have compute the return over drawdown ratio. So I have import the drawdown function that we have created in the backtest chapter of the algorithmic trading for beginner course. So I will not explain it here, okay? But Using this, we can compute the maximum drawdown and we have already taken the last cumulative return, the return on the period. So here is equal normally to 80%. And here, the return of a drawdown ratio is just the return over the period divided by the maximum drawdown on this period. And as we can see, we have a return drawdown ratio of the period equal to nearly six, which is very, very good because a strategy begins to be very good when you have a return drawdown ratio above 1.5. So here it's only a little example, but if you want to compute the performance of a strategy, you can use the sharp ratio, the sortino ratio, etc. You can really take the metric that you want. And don't hesitate to tell me in the comment what metrics you use to compute the performance of your strategy. It's very interesting for me. And if you like the video, don't hesitate to put a like and comment. It's very essential for my SEO.